Hey guys, it's Landon Blake from TopBuySurveyor.org. We're doing some more videos on basic survey math. I'm going to do two or three videos that teach you how to work with bearings and azimuths. That's a way that surveyors measure directions, the direction of, of, of a line or multiple lines. So we're going to talk about, um, in this video, azimuths. We're going to explain what azimuths are, and then we'll introduce you to the concept of bearings. And then I'll probably do another video where we teach you how to convert between bearings and azimuths and azimuths and bearings. And then we got one more video we're going to teach you how you can take two bearings or two azimuths and calculate the angle between two lines. Okay, so that's all very important stuff surveyors need to know how to do. All right, so ignore this stuff over here. That's going to be for the next video. Okay, just come over here and look at this. All right, <clears throat> so we you can think of this as a, as a big dial or like a protractor. Okay, it's an imaginary protractor. And uh, that's what we use to measure angles, right? So I have an actual protractor right here. Okay, this is a half of a protractor. Okay, but you can see it's it's got all these ticks in it, right? Okay, that you can use to measure angles. Okay, so this is our imaginary protractor. And just to kind of make things a little bit easier, I've labeled some points on here. So this line that goes across the long axis of the whiteboard here, kind of east-west, we're, that's the, what we're going to call the equator. Then we got the North Pole and the South Pole. Those are just help us to orient ourselves on the dial. Okay. You notice I have this nice, pretty, pretty circle there. Just want to let you guys know. I bought me a whiteboard compass so that my circles look like circles and not gumdrops. Did that just for you guys. That's how much I care about you. All right. So now that we're done admiring my nearly perfect circle on the whiteboard there. Let's get back into azimuths. Okay, so in order to measure a direction, either an azimuth or bearing, you have to you have to have a reference line that you measure from, okay? So you gotta know uh, what, what the zero is, okay? What the zero, the zero line is, okay? And so <clears throat> surveyors, we always put zero towards the top, okay? So towards the top of the page or towards north, towards the top of the earth. Okay, that's our zero. Okay, and then we measure surveyors, measure angles in a clockwise direction. So you can see here, zero at the top, and then we measure angles and directions in the clockwise direction, okay? So we've got zero here. At this equator mark, we've got 90 degrees. Down here, we've got 180 degrees at the South Pole. Then at this equator mark, we've got 270 degrees. Okay, then back at the top, we've got zero degrees. Okay, now, for those of you that are either taking a math class or uh, that work in CAD, a lot of surveyors work in CAD, the default coordinate system that's set up in most CAD programs, and, and this is because it's, it's a mathematician thing, you know, mathematicians do everything the hard way. They put zero right here on the right side of the page at the equator. They still measure clockwise, okay, but they're shifted 90 degrees to the right, okay, there's zeros here. Their 90s here, their 180s here, there's their 270s up at the top. Okay, but I'm going to erase those little numbers in orange now because that's. We hope you never have to worry about the way mathematicians measure angles again. <laughs> okay, so this is taught by a surveyor, not taught by a mathematician. So we're just going to worry about the way surveyors do it. Okay, now just this is a little abstract what we've talked about so far. So let me just give you an example. Okay, of, of, of when we might use this. So if you can imagine, we've got a map, let's say, okay? We've got a printed out physical map, okay? And we've got two mountains, two mountain peaks, okay, on our map. And we wanna know what is the direction between these two peaks, okay? So I just told you, the way surveyors measure directions, we always put zero at the top of the page, right? So we want to know, in essence, if I were to put zero right here, we want to know what is that angle that tells us what the direction of this line is. Okay. Now you could also think that's just a that's just kind of an il illustration of how directions are used, kind of on a on a physical flat surface like a map, or could be a, a coordinate system in a CAD program. Okay, but surveyors do this in real life. So if I'm out, <clears throat> let's say I'm hiking out in the woods. Okay, and I know which way north is because I have my compass. Okay, so I know which way north is. Okay, I could use a map. It's the same example here, except now I'm out in the woods. But I've got my map. I know this is north, and I know this angle, let's say, 
This angle is 60 degrees. Okay, so this direction here is going to be an azimuth of 60 degrees. And I can actually orient myself with my compass. Okay, and then I can swing over on my compass to find the 60 on the compass dial. Okay, and I know that if I go that direction, I will eventually, if I walk that direction, I will eventually get to this other mountain peak if I'm standing at this peak. Okay. And you know what? I bet you there's some good uh, videos. They call that orienteering. I bet you there's some good videos on YouTube about the basics of orienteering. I'll try and find some of those and link to them in this description. Okay. But that just that's to make this a little more concrete. All right. So if you want, you can imagine this green circle here as a compass that you would use out in the woods if you were hiking, as an example. Okay. Okay. So azimuth start at zero. They go clockwise around the compass, okay? They start at zero and they come back to 360 or zero, okay? So on our compass, 360 degrees is also equal to zero degrees. That's where the dial starts over, okay? So let's just plot some common azimuths here for you guys, okay? So if we had a line coming out this direction, that's going to be roughly 45 degrees. That's that azimuth, okay, down here. This azimuth right here would be 135 degrees. Okay. I'm just what I'm doing is I'm taking the 90 degree slices here, pizza slices, and I'm splitting them in half. Okay, so this would be 225 degrees. Okay, and then this one up here, this direction would be I got to do the math on this one. So this would be looks like 315. I should know that 315 degrees. Okay, so these are all azimuths. Okay. So if I'm standing out in the woods and somebody tells me we're trying to get to base camp and somebody tells me, all right, Landon, you're facing north, base camp is an azimuth of 315, 315 degrees from where you're standing. I know base camp is that way. If somebody says base camp is 225 degrees from where you're standing, I know I got to turn. It's this way. Okay. This way is north. Okay. So that's how azimuths are measured. There's a different way to write azimuths, but I usually just put an AZ. So AZ 45 degrees okay. or AZ 135 degrees. That's how I write azimuths. Okay. Now, in these videos, I'm only using to the nearest whole degree, okay, which is that's what you'd use if you were out in the woods with a compass. But if you've watched my other videos, you know that surveyors we can measure angles out to the second. So we could actually have something like an azimuth of 135 degrees, 18 minutes, and 48 seconds. Okay, that's just a different precision on the measurement of the direction of the line. Okay, so that's how azimuths work. Pretty simple, fairly simple. Okay, now let's talk about bearings for a little bit. Okay, so bearings are a different, just a different way to measure direction. Okay, I don't know who invented bearings. They're a pain in the butt. I've been surveying for a long time, so I just used to use them, but um, I think we, we would have been okay in the world with just azimuths, but somebody came up with bearings and surveyors use them, and so we got to know how they work. <laughs> okay, so bearings are a little bit different. Okay, so what you do with a bearing, so I'm going to write these numbers in, uh, I'm going to go back to my, uh, you know what, I'm going to use brown because I haven't used that yet. Okay, so. On your compass dial, if you're working in bearings, you actually have two zeros now, okay? So, this is a zero. You also have a zero down here. So the north pole and the south pole are zeros, okay? And then you have two 90s. Oh, I shouldn't have done that, sorry. This is 90, and this is 90, okay? Sorry, let me put my 270 back up there for you guys. Okay, and the arrows point different directions too. So on a bearing, we measure the value of the bearing. The bearing gets bigger as we go down towards the equator from the pole. So they get bigger this way, and they get bigger this way, okay? So you see that? Okay, so just to kind of quick overview of bearings, the zero azimuth is the zero bearing, 90 azimuth is the 90 bearing, 180 azimuth is a zero bearing, 270 azimuth is a 90 bearing, okay? And bearings get 
get larger as you, they're zero at the poles and they get larger as you move up to the equator. Okay, so let's look at those examples again that we did before, but now we're going to do them as bearings. Okay, now in a bearing, they, div div they divide the compass into four quadrants. Okay, I'm going to just write that over here so you don't forget. Four, what we call quadrants. Okay, quadrants means an area of force. Okay, quad means four. Okay, so quadrant. Okay, so this is the northeast quadrant up here. This is the southeast quadrant. Northeast, southeast, southwest quadrant over here. Northwest quadrant. Okay, in order to have a bearing, you always got to know what quadrant you're talking about. Okay, so this line right here, this would be north 45 degrees east. That's the quadrant. Northeast is the quadrant. 45 is the angle value of the bearing. Okay, this one would be south 45 degrees east. This would be south 45 degrees west. And this would be north 45 degrees west. Now, I told you. I didn't know why bearings were invented. That's actually a lie. So you notice before when I did these four lines, when I was figuring out the azimuth, I had to do some math in my head to figure out what those azimuths are. The nice things about bearings is you don't have to do that math, right? <clears throat> it makes it a little easier to work with, with uh, certain types of directions, okay? The other thing you'll notice is this bearing here of southeast 45 degrees, if you reverse the direction of the bearing, it's just north 45 degrees west. So south 45 degrees east is north 45 degrees west, right? This stays the same. The angle value just stays the same. You only have to change your quadrant. So it makes it really easy to flip directions backwards and forwards. It's another reason why people use bearings, okay? You don't have to do any math to the angle value. With the azimuth, you have to do the math, right? So this azimuth is 135 degrees. You gotta do some math. You gotta add 180 to figure out that it's 315 over here, okay? 315 degrees. So that's part of the reason why people use bearings. Now, that's a lot to take in. I don't want you to panic. Um, we're going to go ahead and we're going to teach you how to convert between azimuths and bearings. Okay. We're going to go ahead and do that. If, if this is really confusing and people let me know in the comments, I'll do it. I'll do another couple videos that explain. Okay. So That's a quick overview of azimuths and bearings. So surveyors use those to measure direction, right? We talked about before. Okay, so it's just the direction of a line. If that's confusing, just remember if you were out hiking, you pointed north, right? Your azimuth or your bearing tells you which way to look to get to your destination if you were gonna, if you're gonna hike to a destination, you know which way north is, that's your zero. You wanna know which direction do you go to get to your destination, that's your, your azimuth or your bearing. Right? Hopefully a lot of you guys hike or you're, or you're not going to understand my video. All right, so we'll do the next video. We'll teach you how to convert from azimuths to bearings and from bearings to azimuths, guys. All right, thanks for watching.